Diskem has withdrawn an internal memorandum to staff that called for moratorium on the hiring of white people. The initial memo was addressing employment equity at the retailer by detailing the targets. The pharmaceutical retailer has since apologized about the manner, or the tone, I should say, of that statement or the memo. Joining us now is Afri Forum's Ernest Van Sale. Ernest, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you for your time on Daytime Update. So Diskem is apologizing for the tone of the memo, but not the message itself. Your reaction? Yeah, that's, uh, that's not good enough. The, the problem was never their tone. The problem was their obsession with skin tone. That was the problem. And that's why uh, well, AfriForum firstly uh, is now, uh, has publicly condemned uh, the scheme alongside thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands even of other uh, South Africans, uh, pretty much all saying the same thing. There's no place for racially discriminatory hiring or promotion practices in South Africa in 2022. Well, is it discrimination or righting the wrongs of the past where previously in this country, you know, when it comes to jobs, especially the best jobs in any environment, those have previously historically gone to white South Africans. And there's even data that speaks to that effect about how in the main it is still black and mainly black females who are locked out of employment opportunities. Every, every government that uses racially discriminatory legislation in the history of, of humanity always says they have a good reason for it and that it's justified, it's different this time, but it's not. The, the bottom line is racially discriminatory legislation, hiring practices, promotion practices is wrong because you are taking someone who is applying for a job and telling them the only reason I'm not uh, going to be hiring you is the fact uh, that you were, you were born with the wrong color skin. That's not moral. This is not just a question about, uh, about uh, hiring practices. This is a, a question about morality as well. Is racial discrimination wrong or not? I fall, and me and my colleagues at Afri Forum fall into the camp that racial discrimination is wrong. In, under no circumstances can it be justified. And that's the way the big debate is now. The big debate is whether South Africa, whether there's a place in South Africa for racial discrimination. If the people that are supporting this type of policy openly just admit and own the fact that they support racial discrimination under certain circumstances, then people can talk like adults. But as long as people dance around the issue, call it all other different nice names rather than what it is, racially discriminatory uh, hiring practices, then there really can't be a, a, a a conversation between mm. adults. And it's precisely because of South Africa's history of racial discrimination that black people are most in need of employment. Absolutely. A lot of uh, what happened in the past has had effect on the present, but then also uh, we cannot then also deny that we have had 30 years of a new government in South Africa and a government that has woefully failed, a government that has seen under its watch an absolute increase in uh, unemployment, a government that still under its watch sees school children, mainly black school children, uh, still going to class under trees, still going to schools with pit toilets after 30 years. And, the, and then you, you expect these students when they leave school to then apply for jobs and have all the skills that they need. This is simply not possible. And that's the root of the problem. The root of the problem is that we have not been, uh, the government specifically has not been able to fix the education crisis that has been going on in South Africa for decades. And that is the root of the problem. And until that problem of education quality in South Africa is fixed, then no amount of racially discriminatory policies are going to be able to fix it. And at the, at the top of that, those policies are immoral okay. as well. So there's a, there's a much broader debate to be had here, and I'm glad that debate is happening at the moment. But two things can also be true. It can be said that the government has failed in the last, what, almost 30 years in order to improve the living conditions of black people, quality of education, access to water, access to housing, but also say that economically, in order for that to happen, there needs to be deliberate policy action to ensure that black people are allowed into spaces where they were previously kicked out or kept out precisely because they were black. So those aren't mutually exclusive, Ernest, are they? Uh, at the moment, uh, if you look at uh, these types of policies, uh, it's, uh, there is a, a mutual exclusion there, seeing as what you're doing is, they, let's use a metaphor, there's a road with potholes in it. Now you're just digging new potholes and using that soil that you dug up to fill in the old ones. You can't uh, right a wrong of the past with a wrong in the present. You're just creating a new generation of disadvantaged people and people that uh, feel that they now have been wronged by the government. And then the cycle just continues forever, the cycle of 
uh, an eye for an eye and uh, it, it doesn't work at the end of the day we have a problem let's uh, let's take a job creation in south africa as a tree mm. the tree is not uh, it's not bearing the amount of fruit that but it, it should. doesn't affect pardon me sir it doesn't affect everyone equally the problem of unemployment even statistically there are fewer white people in south africa fewer white people who are unemployed in the country so it would be disingenuous would it not to pretend that that level of suffering affects both black and white equally hence the need for these the, policies this is not about uh, who it uh, and what amount it affects people it's about whether a policy is morally right or wrong and whether it actually solves a problem or whether it just creates new ones like i said we have, a, let's say, the, the unemployment crisis is a tree that doesn't have enough fruit. If you are using representativity and, uh, and uh, um, racially discriminatory laws as the, uh, the, uh, the solution to this problem, you're hanging some plastic fruit in the tree and pretending like you solved the problem. But the, the education crisis in the country is why, is at the root of the problem. If you fix that, then you're going to organically solve the problem without discriminating against anyone, without uh, uh, creating any type of new injustice in the present. And that's why mm. uh, AfriForum does not support it, uh, the, this type of policies, because racially discriminatory laws are wrong in principle. It's not about if it targets the right people, then it's right. It's, uh, it's an immoral type of law. It's an immoral type of hiring practice. And there's no place for it. And that's why uh, we, uh, we call on uh, more and more people to to, uh, to stand up against this because there needs to be a bigger debate about whether uh, racially discriminatory laws have had any real effect uh, on or even uh, achieved what they okay. uh, what they set out. It doesn't seem they have even. By more people standing up, do you mean you're encouraging some of the conversation online at the moment where white people are saying they're going to withdraw their spending from Discam basically to punish uh, the retailer for this policy? Is that what you are supporting? Well, firstly, when I, well, the debate that I'm talking about is that uh, we come, uh, that we have a frank debate about the fact that racially discriminatory policies have done nothing but damage the economy. It's only been used in, in a lot of cases uh, for Carter deployments and uh, for specifically BEE is a very exclusive club, club and the majority of South Africans know they're not in it. And uh, that's uh, something that you hear more and more in the public conversation. When it comes to action, what actions should be taken, um, I think people can decide for themselves. I'm not going to say uh, how uh, our members, for example, at AfriForum or anyone that doesn't like these policies, how they should react, they can use their own discretion. There's many things uh, that they can do. One of the things that I think uh, that I would recommend they do and something they consider is to take their money where it's welcome, that they support small family-owned pharmacies rather than big corporate pharmacies so many that are boycott. just towing the, the government line. So a mini boycott of this game. It, I wouldn't say it's a boycott. They, they, a boycott would be an open call that you should not shop at Discam. For me, it is people can decide for themselves, and I, I would, I would think that but the best option then would be. But you would encourage them to shop be. elsewhere. You're saying decide for yourself. But if if they mm. take your advice as earnest, you're saying shop somewhere else. Yes, uh, that would be my advice, but I would, not, uh, I would not say that if they don't take that advice or if they don't uh, follow what I say, that they're a terrible person or that they're not uh, doing the right thing. They can decide for themselves and they can uh, decide and talk with their wallets. Their wallets can be their strongest vote in what they think is right. Well, ultimately, though, even if that happens, uh, triple BEE and affirmative action still remain policies that are legitimate in this country as far as the law as it currently stands. So boycotting just this game in the main changes very little does it not no well it sends a message that uh, if you go along with immoral policies then uh, you are part of the problem it sends a message to all other corporate south african businesses that uh, if they keep uh, uh, towing the racial discriminatory line and race obsession line that is uh, coming from government then uh, there will be consequences for them. That's the message that it's sending, is that there's no place for any support of these uh, types of policies. And saying that uh, you are going to be fined is not an excuse. Uh, a lot of uh, companies under apartheid could have said, but the government, uh, apartheid is law, segregation is law, therefore we have to practice it. You don't have to. If it's not, uh, if it's, uh, if it's not moral, you uh, need to stand up against it. Then you have a, you really have a responsibility to, to the do it. apartheid regime. Is that a fair comparison? No, I'm not saying we're living currently under an apartheid regime. You used I'm an saying apartheid that apartheid Yeah, but racially discriminatory policies enforced by government is something that the previous regime did and that the current regime is doing. But it's not That's the same what thing, is common. it, when you consider that the apartheid government deliberately went about keeping black people out of proper housing, proper education, proper employment, health care. So an employment policy by this democratic government, which can still, by the way, if you wish to be, 
challenged in court is not quite the same as an apartheid example. That's why I'm saying that and I'm not saying that uh, we're living under a new apartheid state. I'm saying that the, the government today, for example, let's take an example like racial classification. The new government of today, the ANC government, just took the racially, racial classification uh, um, uh, policies of the previous government and copy and pasted it and is still using it with, uh, with absolute just uh, the, um, uh, free will. And then the other thing is when it comes to racially discriminatory hiring practices, the government is pressuring corporate South Africa to exclude people based on their race for, uh, when it comes to hiring and promotion. That is racial discrimination. And racial discrimination is something that needs to be st stood up against, whether it's on the scale of apartheid or the scale of the ANC government. It's something that's wrong in principle. And a lot of people fighting back against this nonsense. Conscious Caracol, whoever he or she is, is one of them.